Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan, and in this video, what in the heck are we gonna do? We're going to express the arrangement of electrons in atoms through electron configurations. Now again, electron configurations are very intense, and so we're gonna break it down a little bit. First thing we're gonna do is state three rules that explain how electrons fill orbitals. Two, we are going to use those three rules to describe the electron configuration for the atoms of any element in orbital notation. And then finally, we'll use electron configurations written in orbital notation to determine quantum numbers. Okay, so first thing we need to understand is that the Heisenberg uncertainty principle states that it is impossible to determine simultaneously both the position and the velocity of an electron or any other particle. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna come back to this model of the atom where I've got my nucleus represented by this tiny blue dot, and this empty space surrounding it is gonna represent the electron cloud. We're gonna use our series of orbitals here. We're gonna talk about how the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, as well as three additional rules, helps us determine how the electrons are gonna fill these orbitals as they occupy the space outside the nucleus. First rule to be aware of is that the Pauli exclusion principle states that no two electrons can have the same set of four quantum numbers. Basically, this means that no two electrons can exist in the exact same orbital spinning the exact same way. The first quantum number that the Pauli exclusion principle references is what's known as the principal quantum number. We're gonna use the letter N to represent that and it indicates the main energy level and your values of n are gonna be positive integers. So one, two, three, and so on. The second quantum number is known as the angular momentum quantum number, which we'll represent with a cursive letter L, and it's gonna tell us the shape of the orbital. So basically what we've done is we've taken our four most common types of orbitals, the s, p, d, and f orbitals, and assigned them an angular momentum number. We've assigned them a number that corresponds to that shape orbital. So the S-shaped orbitals will have an angular momentum quantum number of zero. P will have one, D will be two, F will be three. The third quantum number is what's known as the magnetic quantum number, which indicates the orientation of an orbital around the nucleus. Now the best way that I understand that magnetic quantum number, or the orientation, is by using a number line. Recall that you can only have one s orbital, three p orbitals, five d orbitals, and seven f orbitals in any main energy level. If we assign that central orbital a value of zero, and then treat all the orbitals to the right of that as positive values, and all the orbitals to the left of that as negative values, it will help you determine what the orientation or magnetic quantum number will be. For example, for the p orbitals, this will be the plus one and negative one orbitals respectively. For the d orbitals, it'll be plus one, plus two, minus one, minus two, respectively. And for f, plus one, plus two, plus three, minus one, minus two, minus three, respectively. Again, note how we always assign that central orbital the zero value, and then treat them like a number line. And again, this number is gonna help us determine which orbital are we talking about? Because there are three p orbitals in each main energy level, and there are five d orbitals and seven f orbitals. So this magnetic quantum number helps us determine which one we're talking about. And the fourth quantum number is known as the spin quantum number, m sub s. And this only has two possible values, plus one half and minus one half. And those are just the two values that are assigned to describe the two possible fundamental spin states. They're either spinning clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay, second rule to keep in mind is what's known as the Aufbau principle, which states that electrons will occupy the lowest energy orbital that can receive it. I like to think electrons are just like me, lazy, and I'm gonna use as little energy as possible. Electrons are the same way. And the third rule you need to be aware of is Hund's rule. It states that orbitals of equal energy are each occupied by one electron before any orbital is occupied by a second electron. And all electrons in singly occupied orbitals have the same spin. Now that rule seems intense, but I'm gonna use my amazing art skills to make it easy for you to understand what Hund's rule is all about. 
boom, I have a house. My house has three rooms. Now, you'll understand this analogy if you have siblings. Let's say mom and dad, or mom and mom, or dad and dad have a kid, and they put that kid in his very own room. But then, they have another kid. To keep the peace around the house, they're gonna put that kid in his own room. And then they have another kid. And that kid, again, gets his own room, keeping the peace. Wow, I don't know why I did not become an artist. So one of the aspects of Hun's rule indicates that when you have singly occupied orbitals or rooms, all of those electrons are gonna be spinning the same way, or all of our people are gonna be facing the same way. But let's say that another kid comes along. We're out of rooms, we've got to start to share. That next kid is gonna go into the first room, but notice how I'm gonna orient him upside down. And I'm gonna put him upside down because I don't want him to interact with his brother or sister. I don't want them to fight. Give him as much space as possible. Then comes another kid, then comes another kid. Again, we don't have any room to give him his own room. I'm gonna make him share, but I'm not gonna put three to a room because that would just be crazy. Chaos. Again, notice I orient him the opposite way of his brother or sister. And then finally, another kid comes along, final room, opposite direction. Now if another kid comes in, at this point we have to build a bigger house, slash start using different orbitals, because you can only fit two electrons in any given orbital. Okay, and then finally, the, this arrangement of electrons as they fill these orbitals in an atom is known as the atom's electron configuration. And one type of electron configuration is known as orbital notation. So it's really important now that you know the rules that watch the subsequent videos that show you how to draw electron configurations in orbital notation to really help you make sense of these rules we just talked about. And that's it for this video. Check out the links below. Have a great day.